In this video, I'm going to show you how to reinstall the faceplate, the top cover, and I'm going to show you how to add a felt drip pad to the bottom cover of your Singer 301. I'm Jim with Sewing Machine Rehab and I show you how to restore, repair, and maintain your vintage sewing machines. This video is actually part of a larger series. It's called Full Singer 301 Restoration and you can find a link to the full playlist in the description box below. If you liked this video, thank you very much. And if you haven't yet, go ahead and subscribe to my channel so you know when the next video is out. Now, we have a lot of work to do, so let's get started. Okay, so for this part of the restoration, let's go over first the parts that you will need. For the face plate, or we commonly call this the nose cover, you need the actual nose cover. This little clip that we took off of the nose plate is called the face plate catch, and it is a little clip with a little screw, it's this one, that holds it in place. And this is one of the thread guides and it attaches to the nose plate with this little screw. So we'll want all of those parts. When we get to the top cover, one of the things that I'm going to do first is I'm going to replace the missing oil wicks that would have went in these three holes right here. So you may have decided not to remove your oil wicks. You may not have had any oil wicks like this one or depending on the date of your 301, as far as when it was manufactured, it may have a totally different type of oil wicking system. And you will just see what look like little black plugs in each of the hole and they're metal and you just drip the oil down on top and you never had to deal with actually having a wick. So the wick that I'm going to use, I buy in bulk, and it looks like this. And I will put a link in the description box as to where I found it. And it fits perfectly. This was something that I kind of had to hunt around for. So if I can help you find it if you need it, I'm happy to do so. And we'll cut this to length, and I'll show you how I get it into the little holes on the top cover and then what you do after that. Then we can put the handle back on and you just need the actual handle itself. You should have two little hinge pins that we'll use and two little metal springs that we'll use. You will have these two little screws that hold the springs in place and you will have the actual two screws that hold the top cover down onto the machine. Last, we will get to how to replace the felt in the bottom cover. So this is the pretty side, but this is the ugly side, and this is where we're going to add felt. I will put a link in the description box for you where you can buy just one. If you're just doing one machine for yourself, I will show you where you can find these. They generally run around $8 plus shipping. I happen to buy my felt in bulk because I do so many of these machines, it's just more cost effective. I found a company that does industrial felts and I actually cut it out of this really large piece of felt. I trace around this and then I cut it out and I secure it. I use little glue dots to hold it down and it seems to work really well. So those are the things that we'll be doing and once that's all done, we can put this stuff back on the machine. So hopefully it won't take too long, but we will cover all of that in today's video. And last, I found this today at Hobby Lobby and I just love it. So it's making a little cameo in this video today. So let's start with the nose cover. Okay, so first we will take the face plate or nose plate and hold it so you're looking at the inside. The smaller portion is the bottom and the wider portion is the top. 
you will want to take your little faceplate catch and the way that it goes on this is if we look at it it's this little l-shaped bracket and there's a hole so turn it so that when you're holding the faceplate in this position the part that's coming up is facing to the left and then you just have to position it on right over this hole the larger of the two screws is what goes in this hole and I just want to say hi mom because she is following along with her own 301 and she's waiting for the next video so she's come very far and I'm super proud of her anyway screw that down tight because think about how this is going to work every time you open up your nose cover this little catch is going to be opening and closing and holding it closed and then you pop it open so if this is loose and wobbly your nose plate isn't going to stay closed so make sure you do tighten it down i like to just double check and it's good so now we have the thread guide if you look at the thread guide you'll see there's sort of an oblong circle and then one that's a little more perfectly round this is the hole that the screw is going to go through the way that this goes in your machine is if you look if you pinch the circle between your fingers and you see how this curves like this and inward you're going to slide it into this little gap but it's easier to turn it backwards and slide it in and then spin it around once you get it into that little cutout in the metal so before you screw it down double check look down the top you should see that the loop comes around like this and the end of the loop the tail of the loop is sort of resting in that metal cutout right there that's so the thread can get behind it and get into the thread guide and then you can screw that one down with the smaller screw once you get it started you should be able to just finish it off with the screwdriver and you could also go ahead and oil these screws if you wanted to before you put them in just getting a good grip is the hardest part so we have this together so it's ready to go back on the machine but I would wait until you can also put the top cover on because all that's holding it in are these two little hinge pins you don't want anything to happen to these pins you don't want them getting bent so don't put it on until you're ready to put the top cover on too now we can focus on the top and you may hear my daughter playing her saxophone I never tell her not to practice I love when she practices so I hope it's not too much of a distraction these are the wicks that I use and the way that they actually go in the machine in these holes is like this so it's one longer piece of the wick folded in half and if you took these out and cleaned them you will see there's probably like a permanent bend in them so what i will do is i will cut it to the appropriate length and i'm going to show you how to pull this wick up through the hole so that just this little sort of tattered end sticks out so first we have to trim it to length and I like to just make it about not quite two inches long and the way that you can tell that if I take my seam guide here and I hold it up to this underside and just measure and that's almost if because these little holes are sort of dented in that's almost how long I'm looking for this is three quarters of an inch right at three quarters of an inch so if I cut each wick an inch and a half 
then it should be the right length to fit into these holes. So I have my little seam gauge here and I'm just going to cut a piece an inch and a half long right about there. I picked the wrong scissors to do this, that's for sure. So I'm doubling the length because it's going to fold in half. So I have one wick, it's an inch and a half long. Then instead of measuring each one, I'll just take that wick to cut all of my other wicks and I need three. So I have three wicks. How am I going to get them in here? Grab some thread, like a spool of thread. I'm just using regular polyester thread, so I might double this up a little bit. But get yourself a decent length piece. And since I'm using a lighter thread, I'm going to double this up because when I use it, I don't want it to break. And then I'm going to fold it again like that. So I should have two sets of tails and then this fold right here. I'm going to take one of my wicks and I'm going to just sort of fold it like that onto the thread. Now, and, and you know what, if it falls off, that's okay. Now what I'm going to do, I can always add the wick back on in a second, is I'm going to push those two tails up the end, not the looped end, but the end with the tails up through the hole until I can pull it through on the other side. So now I have my looped thread here and my tails here. Now I can take the wick, I'm just gonna half it here like this. I wanna make sure that the ends are pretty even at the same spot and I'm just going to start pulling it up through this hole. And I want to do that until I can just see the wick at the top of the hole. I should still have a little bit of wick coming out of the bottom. And depending on how thick the wick that you bought is, you may kind of struggle with this more, or if you're putting the old original wicks back in, they might be harder to tug through and you'll get it almost perfect and then you'll pull it all the way through and you'll have to start over and it's frustrating but that's just how it goes so this is how you put in the wick so i'm going to do the other two once they're all in the idea is is that you're going to drop oil onto these wicks until you see that these little points here the little ends are saturated and maybe even some oil has dripped off of them. It will take more drops of oil than you think and it's sort of a slow process. You do a few drops, you let it soak down in, you do a few more. If you try to do it too quickly, it'll run all over the top and that's just a waste of oil. So I'm not going to do that now. I'll do that later when I'm done putting the handle on so I can just let it sit and soak. So for the handle, first you have to look at the handle and figure out which way does it go. It actually has a specific way that it fits into this groove and works with the hinges. And you will put it in and sort of turn it and figure out how that works. But I'm just going to show you. If you look, especially if you have a black machine, look at the end of your handle here. For me, see how nicely painted this is? And see how worn this is? There's a good hint on which way this handle actually goes. So if this handle is going to be sitting in the top of the lid, 
these really worn parts are what has been rubbing up against the hinge. If you turn the lid so the back, this cutout edge, is facing towards you, and then you look at your handle, this little funny shape should also be facing towards you. Slide it up in, and then you're going to take these two little pins and slide them into the hole on each of the handle ends. And then you're going to let it rest down in there. This is how the handle worked. Now, a tip I like to give is just a little, and I mean a little, squirt of grease here. It does not have to be a lot, but it will help with the noise a little bit. You could also drop oil here. You would just need to remember to oil it every time you oil your machine or every few times at least. Now we can take our little spring clips and the way that they go, look at how this is bent. Okay, you have a hole on this end and then it comes up like this. That part that comes up is actually going to face down. So it's going to dip down towards the hinge pin. So you just put it on like this and you can add your screw. I might have got too big of a screwdriver. Nope, I'm good. You tighten it down like that. Same thing here. I have my little piece. It's dipping down, not up. There's not a left or a right. It's the same on each side, which is nice. Oops, nice to know. And then I can just tighten this one down. So when we clean this, you probably found grease. So like I said, you can grease it. You can also oil it. It's just like I said, you'll have to probably oil it more often if you chose to go the route of oiling. So there we go, we have our handle back on. I think that looks really good. And listen, it's a nice quiet operation. Handle flips up and down. And this is what made the 301 so fabulous because you could pick it up and carry it, which is what I love about it. So there you go. We have the handle back on the lid. We have the oil wicks in, that part is done. So what that means is the last thing that I have to do is cut the felt for this. I am going to trace around this with chalk and cut it out. And then I will make a few adjustments to make it fit. I'm not going to film that part. I have to get out my cutting table and my cutting mat and all of that. So I'm going to get the piece cut out. I'm going to provide a link for you to find just individual that I believe are already like have an adhesive type backing uh, that you can purchase online. But then I'll show you how I put mine in as well. And then we can finish up with putting all of these gorgeous pieces back on the machine. So. Be right back with the felt. So I've cut my felt out. I mentioned I use glue dots to glue my felt down. I could use something like rubber cement, but if you cleaned this off, you know what a nightmare it is to get all that glue off. So I felt like these little glue dots were a better way to go, especially if there is a chance that this pad is going to need to be replaced. Then, it's just a little piece of fuzz. We're gonna position it. And if you bought a felt drip pan replacement, you would have the adhesive back. But you're just gonna put it into place. Make sure that it fits properly all the way around. And press it down. And then, there you go. 
So we're ready to put all of these parts back onto the machine. So to put the bottom cover back on, you probably can figure this out yourself, but you're going to look at the way the bottom cover is designed and you will see you have this little notch here that lines up here and you're just looking to find this little end of a screw and you're going to slide it through the hole in the bottom and everything else should line up for you nice and neat. Once you have that on, if you have the original felt, you want to slide it on before you start screwing on the little nut that holds everything in place. If you don't have the original felt, you can buy red spool pin felts. They fit here as well. You want to have that. The reason why is your machine's going to vibrate as you sew, and there is a chance that if you didn't have this little felt here, while the machine is vibrating as you sew, you could possibly get some rattling noises added in to all the other sounds the machine might be making. So that little piece of felt just keeps the rattling down to nothing. So we have the bottom back on, and we can flip the machine over. And I'm going to flip it over so we're looking at the nose end. So now we're looking at the nose and this is where the nose cover or face plate is going to go. And if you look at your face plate, you will see these two little pins, which hopefully are still there and nice and straight. And you're going to find two holes in the machine. One will be right here and one will be right down here. You want to slide so both of those pins are right over those holes. And then just with a little wiggle, they should settle down into the holes for you. Now you can check to see if your clip is going to work properly. And what's really cool is that this clip is clipping around the bushing for the needle bar. There you go. So the only way to get this on and off is to have the top cover off. So it makes sense that you would have to put this on before you put the top cover on, which is what we're going to do next. So you should have your top cover and your two screws. This cover, you'll notice the cutout on this side is going to fit down on our thumb screw that regulates the pressure on the presser foot. It just should slip right around that and pop into place. Then you can just put your two screws right in the top. Now we're putting this all back together, but there is a chance that when we start testing it out that this top cover is going to come off again and maybe the nose plate. And that's why I won't put the bed extension on until we've done our test so and we're sure that we're happy with the tension of our upper and lower tension. There's no point in getting that bed extension on until we're done with that. So look at that, <laughs> almost done. So do you know what we could still do today before we wrap it up? We could go ahead and put our feet back on and I hope that you cleaned the screws for the feet on the bed of your machine they might have been rusty more than likely they were but you will see how nicely they can clean up and I didn't even like try to polish these I just treated them for rust and got a lot of the old gunk off so to put the feet on the machine check this out you can lift it now if you tighten down that lid. But to put the feet on, you just want to flip it back on its back. And I always do this right before I send a machine out to a customer. And the reason why is because these little rubber feet attract lint. And if you have a pet, which I do not, but if you did, 
their pet hair, everything's gonna stick to these little feet. So it's one of the last things I do, but we'll do it today so you can see how it goes. Plus that little extra added height that the feet give you on the bed actually is helpful if you're plugging in your foot controller here on the side. There's very little clearance for that cord to, to bend if you don't have these feet on. So I find it that it's easiest if I just slide the screw into the center of the foot first, and then I just screw them all in. Pretty easy, but it's a step that you don't want to forget. So I'll just go around and do all four of the feet. So there she is, and isn't she beautiful? Not done yet. So when we come back, we will need thread, a needle for your machine, just a standard Schmetz needle, some scissors, some fabric to test sew on. We'll do test sewing. We'll decide if we need to adjust our tension at all. We can talk about adjusting the foot pressure because sometimes you might think you have an issue with your tension or your stitch length isn't functioning properly and all you really need to do is add pressure actually to the presser foot. We will also make sure that our bobbin tension is proper, which is something you won't really ever have to change, but you do wanna get it set properly. So thank you so much for watching. Congratulations if you've been following along. You are to the most exciting and rewarding part. I will see you again really soon. Bye.